Hello class, thank you for joining me for this video lesson. Um, today I'm going to cover cell reproduction. I have a PowerPoint, some video clips, and then um, a little bit of discussion. So let's go ahead and get started. Let me just pull it up real quick. Okay cell reproduction. So there's two types of cell reproduction, mitosis and meiosis, and you can see they take slightly different paths, but um, we'll go through each one. So today we're going to cover a mitosis introduction that's got video clips to explain the stages. I'm going to compare the two types of cell reproduction, I'll explain what the difference is, and then I'll give you a clue on how to, you can remember the differences. So there's stages here of mitosis. We have interphase, which comes at the first and last parts listed here, because that's the in-between time. So it's when the cell is living, when the cell is producing its own food, and generally not in a state of reproduction. The first phase is prophase. That's when it starts cell reproduction, so we're going to watch a video clip that explains about prophase. During the first stage of mitosis known as prophase, threads of chromatin found in the nucleus of interphase cells condense into the compact structures seen here, called chromosomes. The chromosomes contain most of the cell's DNA and are where the genes are located. As prophase continues, the nuclear membrane disappears and tiny tubes called microtubules gather to create a structure called the spindle. In animal cells, the spindle takes shape around two structures called centrioles, not found in plant cells. It is important to realize that during prophase, the chromosomes are actually doubled and are made up of two identical strands called sister chromatids. The sister chromatids exist because the cell's DNA was replicated during interphase. A special structure called a centromere joins the two chromatids together. Okay, so we've covered prophase. Let us continue on to see metaphase. the second stage of mitosis, spindle microtubules attach to the centromeres of the doubled chromosomes. Metaphase ends when all the doubled chromosomes have arranged themselves on the equator of the spindle. Okay, so metaphase, all of the chromatins meet in the middle, so that's one way that you can remember what's going on during the phase. Metaphase, they meet in the middle. All right. And we'll go on to anaphase. Anaphase, the third stage of mitosis, begins when the centromeres split apart. Then, with the help of the spindle microtubules, the sister chromatids pull away from each other and become separate chromosomes, which swiftly move in opposite directions. Okay, so in anaphase it talks about that the chromatids are moving away from the middle. So metaphase, they were meeting in the middle. Anaphase, they're moving away. So that's how you can remember anaphase. And we'll continue on to the last stage. Here we go. This is telophase. During telophase, the fourth and final stage of mitosis, the new nuclei make their appearance as nuclear membranes form around the clumps of chromosomes. As the new nuclei develop and the chromosomes change back into chromatin, cytokinesis, or cytoplasmic division, occurs when the cell membrane pinches off. At this point, cell reproduction has been accomplished, and there are now two new daughter cells, 
each of whom possesses the same genetic information as the parent cell. Okay, so the final stage was telophase, which then goes from one cell to two cells. So that's how you can remember telophase is the last. It goes from one cell to two cells. Okay, so there's two types of cell reproduction. We looked at one in the videos, and it was called mitosis. So that's the first one here, mitosis. That's how it's pronounced, mitosis. The purpose of mitosis is for cellular division. That means replicating one cell, and it results in sister cells. So that's two cells that look the same, have the same information, they do the same job, and it's diploid. It was covered a little bit about the number of chromosomes and that they were doubled when it's going through cell reproduction. So a diploid cell has 46 chromosomes. And then there's meiosis. Sometimes it's pronounced meiosis. I'm going to use the, pronoun the pronunciation meiosis because it sounds a little more different than mitosis. So meiosis is for reproduction. That's usually for um, sex cells. So it does do cellular division, but it divides an additional time so that you result in four gametes. So mitosis has two sister cells, so they're sisters. And then for meiosis, we make two, gamete, um, two sister cells, which then divide into two gametes. So you have a total of four gametes. And that's a haploid, which means that there's only 23 chromosomes. So there's only half the genetic information, and that's how when you add two of them together, which is for fertilization, you get an offspring. And we'll talk about that more a little bit later. So we have two types of cell reproduction. So how do you remember? Well, one easy way is through the sounds, just how the words are said. So mitosis, if you emphasize the I sound, you get mitosis is for cellular division. If you emphasize the I sound again, division, which makes identical cells, identical sister cells. All right, so mitosis is for cellular division, which makes identical cells. All right, so what do you think we would do with meiosis? Well, it's an E sound, so you get meiosis. It's for sexual reproduction. You really have to emphasize that E, reproduction which makes gametes, and that's what we call the single sex cells, and that's what meiosis is producing. So meiosis is for sexual reproduction, which makes gametes. And that's how you can remember a little bit of the difference between the two types of cellular reproduction. So I just want to go back real quick to show you the stages. So you have interphase, which when it's in between reproductions, not really doing anything. There's prophase, which is the first one. It's kind of the preparation, right? So that's the first preparation, prophase. And then they meet in the middle, the chromosomes line up, meet in the middle for metaphase. And then when they've gotten attached to the spindle, then in anaphase, they're away from the center, moving away, so anaphase. And then in telophase, you result in two cells. So with telophase, you get from one cell to two cells, telophase. And then in interphase, you have a break between reproduction. The cell is growing a little bit, making its own food, getting energy, doing its job. And that's what's going on with those. So I just wanted to go over cell reproduction. If you need to review the videos, you can certainly do that. We have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and then there's interphase, which is just kind of the rest of the time. And I would really like you guys to memorize that. Um, use the keywords to help remember but be able to write a sentence about the stages, um, what's done in each stage, how it differs from the stage before. So um, 
what kind of actions can be seen at the beginning to denote that it's changing phases. And then also, don't forget that you have mitosis, which is for division of a cell, right? And then you have meiosis, which is for the reproduction of gametes, and so then you get four instead of two. So that's really key. So review this video again, and we'll talk about it more in class.